what is the number one guaranteed method to make depression, anxiety, all types of human suffering disappear? Drum roll. Brrr, there isn't one. Ta-da! There are as many ways to heal from pain and suffering as there are people. And that's why here at Mental Wealth TV, we like to talk with people from a whole range of backgrounds and all walks of life. Because there's something for everybody here. And I had the great pleasure recently to sit down with a very special guest. My dear friend, Hanshi Dina Naidu, one of the world's leading karate masters. And I wanted to talk to him about how he helps thousands of people around the world in over 54 countries heal from suffering and pain and helps them build their character and their lives. And definitely a very exciting interview. What you will like about this interview is that Hanshi Dina is a wonderful storyteller and of course he kept his best story for last. So you want to stick around right to the end. Without further ado, here is my interview with Hanshi Dina and I do. Enjoy! So I have the pleasure of introducing you to my friend Hanshi Dina Naidu. I met Dina um, a long time ago, many years ago, and it was almost an immediate friendship and we got talking and uh, we never thought that years later I would be interviewing him from one side of the world to another side of the world. I'm here in Spain, Costa del Sol, and Hanshi happens to be in Sydney, so that's a long way. and. Since then, Hanshi Dina Naidu uh, has had podcasts and videos um, that have gone right through the world. I believe your podcasts uh, have touched the people in 54 countries. Over a thousand, how many people would you say is it going to? Uh, well, I, you know, I didn't even calculate it, but it's quite a number. Quite a number. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And your main objectives, if I if I gather correctly, and I'm, this is what this is about, getting to know you, is your main objective is to help people, people suffering. When people are suffering, you care about that and you want people to be happier. Is, is that correct? Absolutely. Absolutely. It's about helping. It's about service to humanity, you know, making people, you know, we all have the potential to become better. It's just the proper guidance and the influence and, you know, people need assistance in understanding themselves. So my idea is firstly to help people understand themselves. In so doing, they will be able to improve their life. In my karate, I am, you know, one of the very few karate teachers that teaches kiatsu, for instance. And kiatsu is about human values, community values, character development and so on. So, you know, my idea is to help humanity become better. Yes. So, and in the interest of transparency, <laughs> I mean, my, my wife, when she was a little girl, she actually studied with you. She went to karate with you. And one of the things that she tells me all the time is that with sensei, at the time you were sensei, now you're a hanshi, but at the time she said with sensei, we did a lot of um, talking about spirituality and about morality and about living the right life. She says that was just as important as knowing how to kick and how knowing your katas and knowing how to punch. So no wonder we, we get along so famously well, <laughs> you and I, because we have basically the same quest, although we approach it a little bit differently, but we do, um, are, we are interested, both of us, in helping people suffer less or being able to manage their suffering because life is about suffering um, and also knowing how to live life in a way that they thrive and they can be happy while they're doing it and have a sense of purpose that's something that that i admire about you it is this strong sense of purpose and i think you do that really well but before we rush into all these things, I just want to get people to know you a little bit. I mean, what's your, what's your story? Let's go back. Yeah, I just want to, before I say that, I just want to say mental wealth is about the richness of the soul. So Absolutely. the discovery 
It's a discovery that the soul is rich. It's wealthy. It's rich, right? So when you look at the word soul, support on uplifting life. That's what I call it. Support on uplifting life. So this is what you do, and this is what we do. We support to uplift life because we discovered that every human being has this richness, has this wealth, but they can't discover it. So we help them to find it within themselves. That's very nicely said. Yeah, absolutely. Good. So um, before we, we go on with your story, because I think what's important, I want people to understand um, Hanshi. Hanshi is, what does it mean? Hanshi yeah. means grandmaster. Now, as oh. you know, in karate, you achieve, you know, the Q gradings, which is the, learning stages of a student and then you become a black belt which is first dan then as you travel along this journey which is up to 10th dan so each dan grading represents something so when you reach third dan you're a sensei and when you reach fourth dan you're a professor and so on so what happens is people progress through the ranks and when you reach uh, 8th Dan, 9th Dan, and 10th Dan, you become a master of the arts. So the title Hanshi means master, master wow. of the arts, grandmaster, I would say. So the grandmaster of karate. So I've okay. reached that. I've been given that title by Fujimoto Hiroshi Hanshi, which was a Japanese master, and Tino Sobrano Hanshi, who is the Australian father of karate. So both these gentlemen have got together and have given me that recognition of grandmaster. So it's the highest ranking in the karate world. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you very much. A lot of work has gone through it. You know, I did a lot of work. I started training at 11 years old, you know, nonstop till I'm now 73 and I'm still training and and love it like the first day I got into the art. Well, so it, it basically took you over 60 years to get to Hanshi. So it's a big deal. Yeah, 60 years of dedication, love, you know, fortitude and, uh, you know, reaching. But my main objective, to be honest with you, my main objective is to help people. So the more sure. I, it's not about you know, walking around with a garland around my neck saying, I'm Hanshi, respect me. It's more about delivering a service towards humanity to help humanity develop. So karate is the means I use to help uh, human beings develop. So, Absolutely. And that's what I do. That's great. That's great. How many Hanshis would you say there are in the world, though? You mean living ones? Yes, <laughs> preferably living ones, yes. <laughs> you know, uh, there's a lot of hunchies in the world, but not genuine hunchies. A real hunchie is like, you know, when people are given titles by another hunchie, another grandmaster. So uh, I would say, you know, there's only about 10 hunchies in the entire world. Okay. So it, it is a fairly big deal um, in the karate world. So... I just wanted people to understand that, that you're not just a do-gooder trying to, you know, off the cuff, but you have um, trained for this. You have been recognized by your peers as somebody that carries themselves with the authority to be one of the few Hanshis in, out of 7 billion people, only 10, 10 Hanshis uh, of this kind. It is, it's, a, it's a big honor. It's a big... Um, it, it's a big reputational aspect to your to your advice. So one of the things that in in mental health we do through the mental health uh, through the workplace mental health institute WMHI, we're firm believers that there's not one size that fits all. So it's not just um, people find the healing through many different ways. Uh, some of them are evidence based, what we would call in academia evidence based. But you know, the majority of people uh, find healing outside of that. And I believe that some people find healing through karate or the spiritual teachings of karate or some other techniques that you, you, you bring on board. 
So tell us a little bit about your story. Now I'm getting back to the original question. Tell us a little bit about your story. You were born in, in South Africa? Yeah, I was born in South Africa in 1949 on the 16th of January at 3 a.m. in the morning. Now there was a riot. There was a riot in the country where, you know, two races were, were in conflict. And uh, my mother gave birth to me out of fear. So uh, I was born four months premature. Now, uh, my father was a police officer. He couldn't attend to my mom. So this poor lady was by herself, and I just dropped out. And uh, we were taken to my grandmother's house. Adopted grandmother who took care of me. She sent her chauffeur to pick up my mom and myself. And uh, that's how I survived in South Africa. And, of course, South Africa, being the country it is, and you've been to Johannesburg, um, in the old days, it wasn't safe at all. And uh, so there was a lot of violence, and I grew up in an environment of violence. So I learned, you know, how to use a knife. I learned how to use a gun, and I learned karate. So I got very equipped, I would say, very equipped to, to handle myself. So I've been in a number of, of, of situations where I had to protect myself against 1, 2, 10, 20 people. So karate saved me. And if I hadn't done karate, I wouldn't have been here today. I would have been buried a long time ago. Karate taught me, you know, the physical uh, aspects of defense. It also taught me character development, right? So uh, right. I learned both, both to keep in balance, you know, the physical ability to defend as well as the character to also to protect yourself because I've learned that goodness is the tool that protects the good, right? So yeah. I developed this, this attitude and thanks to my teacher, Gogen Yamaguchi, that I went to see in Japan and lived with him and trained under him and he guided me to develop good character. Okay. So you went in for the fighting aspect and then... The you kind of stayed because of the character aspect. That is that right? Exactly right. I went there to become a better fighter and I came back being a better person, I suppose. You know? All right. So, in, in your opinion, I mean, and in your opinion is a world class opinion. What makes a good fighter? Well, a, a good fighter is a fighter that has no fear. You know, if you have no fear, you become a good fighter. You know, I stand with my students sometimes and I have fighting with them. And when they stand in front of me, I won the battle already because they're not sure what I'm going to do. And they think in their head, oh, I'm facing Anchi, he's going to kill me. So immediately their confidence has dropped and I just walk all over them. It's easy for me to do. And also karate is, has developed in me the sense of awareness, you know, the sixth sensibility of being able to read your opponent. Like I showed them last night how to read your opponent and know exactly what they, were uh, they are going to do. So karate has helped me develop to be able to read people like you, for instance. If you are meeting a client for the first time or you're meeting somebody for the first time, just by the facial expression, you know the kind of character that person is whether it's a likable person or not a likable person, whether you can work with this person or you can't work with this person. So just by looking at somebody's face, the energy that they give off will tell you exactly the kind of people they are. So right. in karate, we learn to read people. We learn to read. Very good. And the kind of karate that you are, do you have competitions? Do you go in competitions? Do you? Ah, that's a good question. Uh, the, the organization that I was connected with in Japan, um, uh, Goju Kai, my teacher originally started competition because he wanted to make karate popular. So he developed competition. And this was an error on his part. This was an error. He told me, I made a mistake. He said, I made, I created a monster I couldn't kill. What he didn't realize at the time that in, when they brought in competition, the ego started de to develop. And with the result, people wanted to be a winner at all costs. So they become winners at all costs, which means hurting the opponent or, 
or doing something that's not uh, legal. So this kind of mentality, this ego of easing goodness out uh, disappears. You know, you, you have an ego that you want to be better than everybody else. And we know that nobody's better than anybody. We're all the same. So yeah, well, that's yes. why I do not do competition. I don't do competition. I teach traditional karate. I teach self-defense. I teach character development. Okay. Good. And I guess that's working out for your students as well. Yeah, my students worldwide enjoy the kind of teachings I got. Look, I'm not worried about 90% of the people in the world. I'm, I'm only thinking about 10%. I only sure. want to educate 10% of the world I've done my job. So if I can reach out to 10% of the population and teach them how to develop good character, I've done my work. Good. So what is good character? Good character is think good, be good, do good, equals live good. So your thoughts, what your head thinks, must be examined by the heart and done with the hand. I call that the three H. Right. In order to be successful, 3H equals GA to the power of S. What does that mean? 3H is head, heart, and hand. So what the head thinks must be examined with the heart and then done with the hands. That's the 3H. Equals GA, which is goal achieved, and, and S is uh, the power of success. To be successful, these, this is what we need. Okay. And how would you define success? I mean, I ask you both as a Hanshi and as a human being that has been trying to teach people this for so long, since you were 11, you were in contact with this. Now you're 73. That's a long time. What is success for Hanshi, Dean and I do? Right. Success is achieving your goals. My goal is to be the best human being I can be, to be ideal as a husband, to be ideal as a father, to be ideal as a grandfather, to be ideal as a son, a friend, a person of, uh, uh, of uh, this community, this country, the world. This is success for me. When I become an ideal person, in all the roles I play, I am successful. Great. So this, this is great for, um, I would imagine, people that are healthy, for example, people that want to achieve goals. Um, that's not always the case. That's not always the case. The people that come to you sometimes, I would imagine they, they're not well. Um, some of them, I imagine, through over the years would have come to you with mental health issues. Yeah. And what, what have you found in, with, with these type, uh, types is such bad, with these individuals, with these uh, human beings that are suffering, that um, deserve our compassion, um, what have you found were some of the problems that they were presenting to you with? What was the, the right. quintessential problem from your point of view? This is why we're talking to you because we want yeah. your, okay. your unique point of view. What is the difference between one person and the other? There's nothing that is different. We are physical beings. We have a mind and we have life energy, which people term a spirit. We have the three things. Everybody also, everybody you meet has those three things. The condition that makes us different is the mind, right? So when we change our mindset, when we change our mindset, when we are influenced by people of, of greater knowledge or greater understanding or know how to cope with life, and we learn the, the, the keys and the the, uh, of how to reach this point, to, to reach um, a better state of mental condition, right? We all become the same. So the difference between uh, a, a person that reaches success and a person that doesn't reach success is the condition of the mind. It's the mind. And the mind is a powerful tool, right? I teach SMA, for instance, right? I teach seven levels of consciousness. So I teach uh, the ordinary mind consciousness, which is the doing mind. When you think of something that you want to do, you go and do it. That is the ordinary mind. When you do habit forming techniques, when you're doing things that are 
repetitive, it becomes habit, which means it is buried into your subconscious mind. For instance, like walking is a subconscious action. So we have ordinary people use the, the ordinary mind consciousness, which is the conscious mind and the subconscious mind. Then you have five other levels above it. You have, for instance, the higher mind consciousness, which I use in karate. The higher mind consciousness is the sixth sense, the ability to be able to do things knowing such and such is going to happen. Like I gave you the example earlier on <clears throat> about when I'm sparring with my student, I can read them because I am now using the sense of awareness to be able to do that kind of thing. And, and of course, we reach different levels. Now, when we meet people that have a, a, a mental issue, for instance. Now, as you know, I work for Vision Australia. Now, I had a client of mine that was uh, at very little vision. He had intellectual difficulties. He had he didn't have much cognitive skills. And so I took him for a job interview. Now, when I sat in the car with him, this guy couldn't even put two lines together. And as I took him along towards uh, this place called Blacktown, on the way I was educating him about the mind, I said to him, how much do you need this job? And he said, very much. I really want this job. And I said, so you really want to do it? You're not going to neglect this job? You're going to do it? Uh, getting up every day and traveling to work? He says, that's not a problem. I said, so you really need it, right? So he was really engrossed in this, and he, and he felt within his consciousness that he needed it. So I told him, okay. Now, the interviewer is going to ask you these questions, and these are, these are your answers. So in the car, I educated this guy. Now, remember, this guy couldn't put two words together to make a sentence because he used to stutter. His intellectual uh, abilities wasn't good enough. But I made him, I made him understand that he could do this because he needed this job. And this journey took me three quarters of an hour. Throughout the journey, I educated him. When he got to the interview and, and he sat in front of uh, the managing director, the managing director asked him a few questions. I couldn't believe I was hearing this guy speak. His interest and his feeling to get this job surprised me it was like a miracle i i didn't know whether it was the same guy speaking he put it all together so well he got the job and the boss said to him start on monday so the condition of the mind is that is what we need to do we need to be able to give people the confidence that they can do it they can do it they can do anything anybody can do anything you can be a multimillionaire or you can be a pauper. The only difference is the condition of the mind. If you have the enthusiasm to drive yourself, you can do anything. Right. If you put in the work behind it, right? <laughs> you put the work behind it. You can't just you gotta put the dream work. because dream is just an illusion, right? You've got to make it happen. Right. I did a yeah. talk with uh, Tyron Smith and Raymond Smith yesterday. Uh, these are great footballers, absolutely powerful guys. I did a thing uh, called the punching technique. So I got Remus, who plays for the Melbourne Storms, very powerful guy. He's six foot five. I'm a dwarf in front of him. And I got him to punch a pad that I was holding, and he punched it. And I said, punch hard, and he punched hard, and he uh, did it three times. And I said, you hold it, and I'm going to hit it. I hit it once. And he moved back. He said, whoa, that was amazing. Now, what is the difference between Remus and me is the technique. All I did, he's 10 times more powerful than me, but I knew the technique how to do it. So mental health, mental health is knowing the techniques. And this is where you guys come in because you know the techniques, what people need to better improve themselves. 
I do it out of karate. I make people that are white belts, black belts. All it takes is the effort, takes the effort and the mindset. I say, you can do it. You can do it. Yeah. Technique is very important. And the right attitude is very important, isn't it? We, we talk about mindset, which we, we basically is, you know, how do you use your mind? Uh, what are your goals? What are your, your missions? What, what is it, though, that you see? I mean, 73 years in this world, it, it's a long time to, to, for someone like you that has been reflecting on life consistently and the state of the world. What do you see as the biggest problem for our society right now? Leaders. In terms of in terms of mental wealth, leaders. leaders. Leaders is the biggest problem. We don't have leaders in the world. We don't have leaders. We we have opportunists, and we have egoistic leaders that is only interested in their own well-being and the monetary gain and to demonstrate ego. They're not real leaders. When we look at real leaders that have passed, Mahatma Gandhi, for instance or Martin Luther King, for instance, you know, these, Mother Teresa, these were great leaders who lived their life of goodness. So today we don't have leaders that are interested in you and me and everybody else. All they're interested in, how can they win? How can they be richer, and more powerful and have control? You know, they've lost that human dignity you know, that welfare, thinking about other people. I'm not a very rich man, but I'm a very comfortable man. I live a very comfortable life. I'm not rich. My wife said that if I charge exorbitant amounts of money, I would be very wealthy today. But where is that wealth going to take me? But today I can stand on a platform and nobody can point a finger at me and said, say that I've done them down or I've cheated them or I've misled them. And that's, that's something important, isn't it? I mean, for people to, to, there's a lack of integrity in the world at the moment, at, at, at every level. It's not just the leaders, but the leaders make it compound the problem when, when elections are won um, as, a marketing, as a marketing gimmick, you know, whatever, whatever people are going to vote for, that's what I'll believe. <laughs> If, I, if they change in the next five minutes, I'll change what I believe in the next five minutes. So we have, we have entered a, an interesting time in human history uh, where the media tells us what to think and there's not, no more, not much more questioning is happening and, um, and, and, and there's a lack of integrity to, to stand for. And there's also a lack of accountability, isn't it? I mean, we, we hear of laws and constitutions and being violated and fraud committed at the highest levels and, and nothing seems to happen. But uh, it, it's interesting, isn't it? Uh, like the, the examples that you mentioned, like Mahatma Gandhi, um, Mandela, uh, Luther King, Mother Teresa, whatever you think of those individuals, maybe they were not saints, you know, they didn't have to be, but they stood for, their lives stood for something. They stood for something. Hmm. Service to humanity is service to the divine. So these four I like that. Service to humanity is service, service to the divine. To the divine. Yeah. So these four individuals, and of course there were a few others, these four individuals was about serving humanity. Do not want uh, what Kennedy said. Do, uh, he said something about uh, uh, the country, don't depend on the country to do for you, you should do for the country, or something like that. I forget the words. Ask, ask, not, ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. I think that's... That's exactly right. Yeah. That's exactly, you got it. Thank you for that. Yeah. yeah. So, so what we need to do is what can we do for other human beings? Not what those, those human beings can do for us, but what can we do for them to improve their life? That's what I see. I see karate as a tool. I see SMA as a tool. I see kiatsu as a tool to improve people so that they lead better lives. They become better. When they look back and they say, 
I have been a good father, I've been a good mother, I've been a good husband, I've been a good wife, and so on and so forth. All the roles that they play, they can stand back and say, on their last breath, I did the best I can in all the roles I've played. What do we take with us when we pass the planet? We don't even take our bodies with us. We no, don't we take, the only thing we take is our experiences and the love that we have in us. We take nothing else. What do you mean by the love that we have in us? What do you mean by that? What do you, what, right, what's the... Right, right. Okay. Love in us is, to me, I call everybody an embodiment of love. No matter how bad they are, no matter how bad they are, they're an embodiment of love. That love may be a tiny spark or it may be a bonfire, but they still have love. The fact that they have life in them, that is love. So we have come from love. We go back to love and we develop love through this process of life. That's what I believe in. So I call everybody love, embodiment of love. When I spoke to the nuns in, in Tokyo, I was living with the nuns in Tokyo and I said to them, I said, after listening to their prayers, I said, you know, stop condemning yourself. Stop saying bad things about yourself. And I said, you are an embodiment of love. You are an embodiment of love. You know, those nuns were crying. They've never heard that before. When, uh, my, my, when I was a young boy, my father called me to the window and he said, son, come and have a look at this. We looked outside the window. And there was a notorious guy called Norman. When Norman was the gangster, he was a really bad guy. He was in and out of jail. He was not afraid of anybody and so on. And I'm looking at Norman. Norman goes down on his knees, takes out his bag. In his bag, he had some sandwiches and he fed a stray dog. A dog that was hungry, he gave it his sandwiches. Now, here was a hardened criminal. Here was a notorious guy. And what did it prove? He had love in him. Mm. It's interesting, isn't it? And how, how, how do we access that personally? But there are two questions here. How do we, how do we access our intrinsic love? Because I, I agree, I, I wholeheartedly agree with your statement. We are embodiments of love. However, how do we access that love that is already there in a more effective way? Right. Let me, let me tell you a couple of stories here. Let me tell you a couple of stories. Now, my friend Atong Jumsai was a, is, was a scientist, scientist for NASA. He developed the landing gear for the Mariner uh, that landed on, on Mars many, many years ago, right? Now, he's a brilliant mind, and he was teaching at the University of Thailand. So he had 12 students, and he was one day out of the blue, he spoke about love. And one of the girl scientists, young student scientists said, Professor, you talk about love. How can you prove it exists? We are scientists. You have to be able to prove that love exists. So he says, okay, next week we'll do an experiment. So the following week, he got... 24 plants for 12 of his students. He gave them two plants each. And he said to them, I said, all right, what I want you to do, I want you to take this into the green room, place one plant on the left side, one plant on the right side. The plant on the right side, I want you to give it a name. Call it Charles, Dick, Harry, Mary, whatever you like. The one on the left, no name. Water the plants every three days, the same. But the ones on the right side, I want you to treat it like family. I want you to talk to it. I want you to tell it the problems. I want you to tell it you love it. You are affectionate. You like it and all that kind of stuff. And they said, okay. So uh, he also said to them, treat it like your best friend. They said, all right. This is an experiment. We'll have a go with it. These were quick growing plants. Three months later, he said, okay, time to check the plants. When they walked in, the plants on the right side was three times taller than the ones on the left side. So you wow. see, love exists. You know, uh, Professor Imoto, and people can look at uh, 
YouTube, Professor Emoto. He took water, a container of water, and he put it into uh, 10 little containers. And on each one of those containers, he named it evil, devil, bad, Hitler, and then goodness, love, peace, and so on. So he had bad names and he had good names. Mm -hmm. He took a droplet of each of those and put it under an electron microscope and looked underneath what did it look like. So all the containers with the good names was beautiful crystals and all shapes. You can see it on YouTube. Your, your listeners can watch it on YouTube. Okay. All those bad names were grotesque and ugly. But grotesque and ugly. So just by words in itself changes the frequency of energy. So are, are, you, are you saying then that how we talk to ourselves or the words that come out of our mouth, the words we choose can be life-giving or death-giving? Absolutely. The words you chose. So if I said to you, I said, Peter, you are a horrible man. I just don't like your energy. How do you feel? You feel, hey, what is wrong with this guy? Why would he say something like that? But if I said to you, hey, Peter, you're such an awesome guy. You know, you just, you. when I see you, I radiate with this good feeling. I love your company. How do you feel then? You feel so much better. So even, even, even though this is just a play, immediately that had a, a different feel for me. Yeah. But mm. Words have emotion. Or well, when yeah. you say words with emotion, and I, when I say I love you and I really like the way you are as a person, it's not just words. It's an yeah. emotional feeling. Yes. So this emotional feeling has a connection. Yeah. But if I throw bad words of you, immediately there's a wall in front and you don't want a connection because you don't want to hear these horrible things. How do you personally, and, and I talk to you because you're, you're here as the expert, the Hanshi, how do you make sure that there are good words going around your head? Yeah, well, the thing is, look, everything is energy. Everything is energy, right? This whole world, the seat that I'm sitting on is energy. You know, the computer in front of me is energy. Everything is energy, right? Now, I believe, I believe sincerely in my heart that every human being, every human being is love incarnate. So, when I talk to this person, no matter how bad he is. Okay, let me give you a story to make you understand the story better. Okay. When I was teaching karate, when I was teaching karate, I had uh, a parent quite upset with me. He was upset because I was reprimanding his kids for bad behavior. I said to the guys, you mustn't behave badly. Get down and do some push-ups. And I gave them some punishment. So the parent was watching this and he was very upset, but I was doing it out of love and the father was upset because I was punishing his kids. So the next day he came to my martial arts store that I had at Rudy Hill and he abused me. Now there's two things I could have done to this guy, assaulted him or forgave him. So what I did in my head while he was abusing me, I said, I forgive you. And I love you. Just in my head. Without saying any words, just in my head. So he walked out of my shop, very angry. Two years later, I had customers in my shop. He walks in, tears running down his eyes. And he says, Sensei, I'm really sorry for what I did to you two years ago. I said, that's fine. I forgave you the moment you said it. That's what love is, to be able to forgive immediately. You never hold on to that. You know, revenge digs two graves, right? Revenge digs two graves. Never be, 
never have this anger, never have malice, never have these things that are not good for the human spirit. We must develop love, even for the most, the worst person on the planet. We have to love them, love them, love the life energy in them, but, but not their actions. You never love a bad action, but you love the energy that is in them, that life energy in them has to be loved. Very good. How, um, and, and that's how we externalize it. And that's, that's a gift, isn't it? That every time we do that, we, we do a two-folded gift. One, we, we give a gift to the person that we're giving the love to, and we're also giving uh, ourselves love by giving love. You know, I mean, the, the one, one sure fire method to feel love is by giving it, by giving it. You know, there's too far too many people waiting for people to love me. I want people to love me so I can experience love. That's not how you experience love. You experience love by giving it. And that's what you're talking about. Right? Is that good? Yes. Um, and I, I think that's another, brilliant. I'll give you another quick story. I had the captain of a, I won't name the, the bikey gang. I had the captain of a, the most notorious bikey gang. Mm -hmm. He came to see me one day. And he said, sensei, he said, sensei. I said, yes. He says, I'd like you to train my children. I said, interesting. Why me? I said, there's so many karate schools around. Why have you brought your kids to me? He said, I heard about you. People talk about you. He said, I want my children to be like you and not like me. So he recognized, he recognized something. He recognized that his children can be molded and become better human beings through my influence. And he hated his influence. He hated the way he was as a person. And he understood love, didn't he? There's yeah, a part exactly. of him. Exactly. He understood yeah, love. love. Yeah, understood mm. love. Yeah. yeah. One, one of the issues a lot of people have in, in the mental health space um, is with their thinking. Their thinking tends to be fairly negative. So at some level, they're choosing the wrong kind of words to describe the world around them. So obviously, you're a human being too. Uh, and as a human being, like all of us, you, you must have had times in which your mind goes negative. How do you notice when that happens? And what techniques if, do you use? Maybe it's become automatic. So I'm asking you to now think back on your process. And what techniques do you use to correct your thinking so it's a powerful kind of thinking rather than a negative, hurtful kind of thinking? Am I making sense? Is, yeah, is that yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay. You know, they say you, you can't stop the birds flying over your head. I like that. <laughs> but you can stop them building a nest on it. Very good. Oh, I like that. Yeah. You can't stop the birds flying over your head, but you can stop them building a nest on your head, right? So negative things are everywhere. Everybody receives negative things. But don't be attached to the negative stuff. When you attach, you become part of the negativity, right? So I say immediately if I have a negative thought, I say those thoughts do not belong to me. The moment I say that, you know, that it's gone. The moment I say that those thoughts don't belong to me, it's gone. So your technique is saying those thoughts don't belong to me. I like that. And, and do you breathe? Do you do something physical with that? Are you standing up? Are you sitting down? Yeah, I'm always relaxed. No matter relaxed. what, I'm always relaxed and calm and cool about it. And I just say when a bad thought comes, for instance, let us say I'm thinking about something about my neighbor, you know, making a lot of noise or something. You know, mm. I say, those thoughts don't belong to me. He's a great guy. Don't. Yeah, and you remind yourself that he's a great guy. I remind mm. myself, and he is a great guy. So I shouldn't be thinking those things don't belong to me. Hmm. 
So how, how we, this is an important thing too, isn't it? How we label our pe the people around us will have a huge impact on our ability to love others and to love ourselves, won't it? Like if I'm thinking my neighbor is the worst person in the world, that's going to that's gonna be a very different feeling to saying my neighbor may have actions I don't approve of. However, they are the personification of love. That's you a completely different thing. Yeah, you mm. become what you think. You become what you think. When you, you do think negative things about somebody else, you become that negative stuff. If I said to you, if I said to you, uh, for the next um, five seconds, don't think about giraffes. What are you going to do? You're going to be thinking you about giraffes. You just made me think about giraffes. You just made me think about giraffes. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> you gave me an impossible command. <laughs> so you become what you think, right? You become what you think. You think negative stuff, that energy surrounds you because everything is energy, right? And immediately okay. the energy around you is negative, and then you think more and more things and until you explode and you get angry and you wonder why am I thinking bad things? Like sure. I said to my students at Karani, start in the morning, don't think about bad things, think only good. When you start the day with goodness, you fill the day with goodness, you end the day with goodness, you become a tool of goodness. So mm -hmm. Don't spoil your day. Don't pollute your day by thinking bad things in the morning. Yeah, I, I completely agree, one hundred percent with that. Um, in, in, in our courses, we we give people really practical techniques so they can start controlling their mind in such a way that it, it turns out powerful actions, powerful and a powerful. What you were calling about before, sac a successful life, you know. And I imagine that you, you, you talk about these things in your podcasts. I talk about this on my podcast. I teach my students at Karani, you know, mm -hmm. constantly. My SMA, I run courses, SMA, which is Spirit Mind Awareness. The Sorry, for SMA stands for? Spirit Mind Awareness. Spirit Mind Awareness. Mind Awareness. So I run these courses. People can do these courses. I do SMA meditation. I do SMA leadership course living with SMA, knowledge about SMA, and I also got a new course uh, called The Sixth Element. So these courses are all about helping people to understand life on a deeper level. Right. So we're not spiritual beings, we're spiritual doings, right? Spiritual doings. Very nice. And what does it mean to you when you hear that, when you say that? Yeah, do do everything that is righteous. Be a righteous person. Lead a dharmic life, which is lead, lead a life of goodness, right? Find little excuse, little excuse. Find little excuse to do bad things. Don't allow yourself. Don't allow yourself to become a victim of your negative self. Don't allow right. yourself. Lift your consciousness. I am love. Lift your consciousness. I am truth. I am peace. I am righteousness. I am nonviolence. This is me. I am statements are very powerful, aren't they? Well chosen. I am statements because we have, we do I am statements all the time. I, am, you know, uh, people uh, that are suffering have got very very bad I am statements. I am a bad person. I am a failure. I'm not good at anything. I am poor. I never have anything I want. Those are I am statements. We're really good at them. Yeah. But we're not very good at, and that takes practice, is I am statements that are powerful, they're well designed, and they're, you know, that our spirit can listen to them and act accordingly. Mm -hmm. yeah, so you raise it very good. I mean, if you start saying I'm fear, I am a sinner, I am a wretched mm -hmm. soul, if you keep uh -huh. saying that, you live that life of, of being a sinner and a wretched soul and everything else. You're you know? going to be very miserable. Yeah, yeah. I am I am beautiful. I am beautiful. Yeah. There's no ugliness in me, you know. I am uh, uh, the child of love. I am an embodiment of love. Mm. I am loved. <laughs> That's a powerful one too. I am loved. Sometimes we don't realize that. Yeah. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to put your 
your URL podcast link on the description so people can go and they can listen to your podcast if they want to. And they can also reach out to you if they if they actually want to. Um, I think it's a very important work that you're doing, um, Dina. And um, I, I thank you for that because we need more people in the world doing this work, especially these days where things have become a little bit confusing. Um, and there's a lot of pain in the world. So how do we how do we step up then ourselves? and impact at a global level. Is that possible just for all me? Absolutely. I mean, you look at this analogy that I got, right? If, if a pond, if a pond can be filled with, with amoeba in 24 days, and amoeba, as you know, divides itself into two. So one becomes two, two becomes four, Four becomes eight. So it takes 24 days for the pond to be full of amoeba. So we are on the 23rd day, which is half full. So if each one of us can influence another, one other, to be a better person than they are, help them to become that, right? On the 24th day, the whole world will change. And we need the world to change. You know, I think there's goodness in everybody. If, if we're willing to look for that goodness, what is it that we can hold on to? And what is it that we can promote in each other um, that, that will stop that level of, of aggression and violence and negativity that is permeating the world? Hmm. It's the mindset. It's the mindset. You know, I'd like to go to every prison in America and Britain and everywhere else in Australia and go and sit down with the prisoners and tell them you are embodiments of love and help them. That's great. Yeah. I love to do that. So if there's anybody listening and they have an influence of being able to get me into any prison in the world anywhere, to sit down with the most hardened criminals and for me to tell them that they're embodiments of love, that will change them. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that, that, that connection that you just talked about, the mindset with the embodiment of the feeling of the embodiment of, of love is what I call the heart set. Not the mindset, but the heart set. When you've yeah. linked your mind to your feeling of love, that's the heart set. You've opened up and you're using now your heart set, which is the next level of evolution, of course. You first got to get this one right and this one, and then you can join them into the heart set. Mm. Yes, well, absolutely, absolutely. Great. Thank you very much, Hanshi. It's been a really, a really um, pleasant, very nice conversation. Uh, we've talked about our favorite subjects, I think. <laughs> That's always a good sign. But it's been really elucidating and it's been really informative. And um, thank you for giving us a little bit of an insight into Hanshi Dina Naidu. Uh, we're very privileged to have you around, hopefully for many, many more years. I can't believe you're 73. You look so young. Must be all the good thinking. <laughs> 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 must be all the good thinking all the nice hard set that you put out into the world must be coming back to you you know, you know the amazing thing i just had an accident not so long ago probably five months now i heard about that my car smashed me into my garage and i was able to hold the car from crushing me to death the paramedic said you should have been dead we don't know how you lived they found me under the car they had to push a trolley underneath and pick me, pull me out of the car. I was all smashed, broken arm. And wow. Stuff. But I survived it. You know, I survived I didn't it. realize. I thought you got your leg got pinned or something. But no, you, you oh, the whole body. No, I, broke my, I broke my arm and my body was damaged. My ankle was damaged. They thought my, my ankle was split, broken into two, just twisted the other way. But for some reason or the other, it reset it itself. <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with the echo. And uh, just my humanness was snapped into two, which they fixed. But um, physically, I'm okay. 
I'm physically wow. Yeah, that's that's a very fast recovery. Good on you. Yeah. And the, the funny good. thing is, when I was with the paramedics in the ambulance, they gave me drugs to kill the pain, right? And uh, when I had these heavy drugs, I started seeing have hallucinations of beautiful colors and all that. And I said to the guys, I said, where can I get some of these drugs? I said, they are good party drugs. <laughs> yeah, I think it's called morphine. <laughs> they should be widely available. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I had one helicopter, two ambulance, five police cars, two fire brigades all come to rescue me. Right. And then I'm sitting and they took me into the ambulance and I said, where are you guys taking me? They said to the hospital in an ambulance. I said, no, 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 no. I believe there's a helicopter. Take me on the helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like a very good party drug. You would have made a very good thing. <laughs> <laughs> the paramedics were saying, the paramedics were saying they've never had a patient that has just come out of the most traumatic accident and laughing all the way to the hospital. <laughs> that's good attitude. No wonder you, you recover so well, which, you know, that's the last gift that you give us here is that how we think, how we connect with the heart can actually help us physically to recover physically. This, this is a well-proven fact that we're not making things up. This has been a study after study, while it is that that shows the impact of the mind over our bodies and how recovery takes a, a very positive attitude. Everything is possible. Now, That's I a nice story. That's a nice story. Very nice motivational story to end with. Yes. Great. Thank you very much, Dina. I think you want it's to get been a real pleasure. Now. I've got too many stories. <laughs> yeah, this is good. This is good. It's been really, really good. I, I'm, I'm going to make sure, I'm going to do a little introduction to this video. I'm going to make sure that people stay until the last story because it's a brilliant story. Thank you very much, Dita. Hi, I'm Emmy Golding, Director of Psychology for the Workplace Mental Health Institute. We hope you liked the video. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. We have more and more videos being released each week. So when you subscribe, you'll get a notification letting you know when a new one's just been published. So make sure to hit that subscribe button and don't miss out on this vital information for yourself, your colleagues and your loved ones.